Hi, welcome back to the Lead Automation YouTube channel. I'm Malachi Greb, CEO and engineer of Elite Automation. Today, what we're going to be doing is showing you guys how to set up the Stride Links device. Stridelinks device is a VPN, which our primary purpose of why we're utilizing the VPN is one, so that we can, way we can have internet while we're connected to our PLCs, HMIs, whatever industrial hardware that we're trying to connect with. And then also we're utilizing VPNs to be able to help remote support customers on the projects either that we've implemented or if they want to create a service contract with us to be able to implement our services, our remote services to their existing systems. We do this for different stuff like Fanuc Robots, Allen Bradley PLCs, and we do this in kind of like a wide range of industries. Uh, if you guys have any more questions on the Stride Links and kind of, you know, how or why we use it, ask down in the comments below. If you're interested in, in our services, go ahead and put that down in the comments below as well. Or you can reach out to me via email. You can go to our website, EliteAutomationUSA.com. But I'm going to go ahead and jump into this thing and we're going to set up this VPN. So here we are on Google right now uh, and Google Chrome because that's the only you know web browser you want to use. And then we're going to go Stride Links. And so it's going to go ahead and pop up for me. So Stride Links Portal Devices. So you're going to have to create a Stride Links account. Now with Stride Links, if I'm not mistaken, the only way you can utilize the Stride Links is a monthly subscription basis which is not a big deal if you have your customer paying for it or if you don't have a ton of these laying around, but the cost could get up there and, and could get pricey if you have a ton of these out in the field. So you definitely gotta make sure like your customer's paying for you know the subscription service and if they already have like some type of service contract with you, then it uh, should not be no big deal. One other thing that we're thinking about doing with this VPN system that I think would be huge, uh, I don't think anybody else is really out there doing that, but is to take the VPN and connect it to some industrial hardware and then create subscription services for individuals to be able to log into those pieces of equipment and be able to do programming and, and just overall get familiarity with the system. Uh, like we have a way that you could portal in through like a Fanuc robot and you could actually do Fanuc robot programming through a VPN. And we also have uh, remote PCs that you could remote into to be able to have access to like Studio 5000 software. And so we're, we're looking at kind of doing something like that as a service just to give more access to more people in the world because uh, the ceiling's pretty high for individuals who are just looking to get education, looking to get training. And to be honest, you want to learn on the most prevalent equipment because a lot of the, the skill is really in knowing the nuances of the software and knowing what all like instruction sets are there and, and things like that. And so if you're working on a system that's not of the brand that you're going to be utilizing, then a lot of times that's... Uh, not going to be super beneficial towards towards your career and towards your applicable knowledge to things. So we have one of these connected right here, uh, as you can see. All right. So one thing that I want to go ahead and point out uh, with this system pretty quickly is I don't like its user interface. I'm actually I kind of dislike most user interfaces because it's like a lot of things are not intuitive enough. Like say for instance you're on devices right here, and you would think that there would be a spot to add devices here, but there's not a spot to add devices. So what you have to do is you have to click over here. You have to go to Fleet Manager. So go to your Fleet Manager. And then once the screen loads up, you'll notice like there's still not a way to add devices. And it's like you're like, what the heck? You know, so like it's just it's just not very uh, intuitive. And and you might miss something. So like for example, this one right here, you have to click on this and it'll open up these things here. And then there's still nothing super noticeable, like, oh, this is what I need to click on to add a device. Like, add a device should be one of the most simple things to do with this software, if you ask me. It's like the rudimentary tasks should be the easy task. The rudimentary tasks should be the ones that are, like, right there in your face, and, and they're just right there on one dashboard, not buried in, in six different menus deep. Uh, so we're going to click on Tools right here, and we're going to go Router Config File. So you need to take the USB stick that you either got from... Uh, stride links which they will provide uh, and or take one of your own USB sticks now we did have an issue with one of the stride links uh, USB sticks being faulty so uh, do keep in mind of that like if it's not setting up this thing should be like bam it should just work and if it doesn't work you're either having a internet issue in your facility you might have a like IT type of issue if you have a lot of security stuff that is something that is uh, 
is very possible. But if you have like just a residential home network or something like that, or you know you have a facility or shop, and it doesn't have a ton of like securities and IT levels of layers of security, then this should work perfect. You should be able to just do this configuration file, load it into there, and it just works. So if it doesn't work, then you, you basically have an internet issue, a USB stick issue, or your configuration file is corrupt, or the name of the file is not appropriate. So we're gonna go ahead and start the configuration. The, they come in different models. So you can have a wired mo model, a wireless module, or a cellular network model. And these options are very, very good to have and very, very important. So like for instance, like this cellular network one uh, could be very advantageous for us where we could put, if we have a bunch of issues with the IT department like I was referring to, this is how you skip past the IT department. Uh, you just put in a cellular network SIM card and you pay for whatever that monthly service is for that cellular network and boom, now you have access. As long as you don't have no internet issues with where you're putting your piece of equipment in the facility, then you should be good. Uh, another workaround that we that we have for doing this is we actually hook up Wi-Fi to the front end of this VPN, and then our service technicians can turn on the hotspot on their phone, and then that Wi-Fi will connect to the hotspot of their phone and be able to portal in through VPN access, because one of the things that we do as a company is we may send one guy on site, but we have like three guys virtually on site who are helping service the, the technician that's there, whether, and this is for like bigger, this is for bigger projects, you know, if we're doing like a full robot install, uh, it makes it so that we can deploy less people to be actually on site, but yet still have a, a, a big and uh, a big team and a big and a larger amount of resources to help support the install team. And then obviously you have wireless network. I think wireless may be a bigger thing going into the future, but there's not a ton of companies that actually have wireless in their facility. This works out really well for us, wireless, because then uh, on our shop network, we can just have one of these and it'll automatically connect and we don't have to worry about plugging in the VPN. And, and really the, pl the plugging in and the wireless option are the best option because like, for us, I don't know if Stridelinks offers it, but like for us, maybe the Wi-Fi makes sense at our shop, but then when we take it to the customer's facility, it just doesn't make sense because either they don't have Wi-Fi everywhere in their facility, or they don't have Wi-Fi that's accessible to automation equipment. You usually just run into a bunch of different things, whereas for automation equipment, everything does potentially have a hard wire. And then you do have the option to be creative as well, and then you could, add, you could have a wireless one, and then you could just add a wireless access point somewhere in your system as well. So if they give you an ethernet drop, you could just put a wireless access point right in your system and then still do all your stuff over ethernet. Uh, and then, but some companies not, are not okay with that. So done rambling on, let's jump into the actual configuration of this thing. So wired network, we're gonna select, uh, do you wanna do DHCP? Do you want it to be a static IP address? We can just let, we can just let all that go for right now. Uh, now it's asking like, what do you want your router IP address to be? So for us, you know, in our shop network, we're definitely on the 192.168.1.1. And if I'm not mistaken, you have to change this last number for every VPN that you have on your network. So your router's IP address might need to change. If I'm not mistaken, your router's IP address needs to change right here. So if you have a VPN for one project, it needs to be this 1.1. And then if you have a VPN for another project, you need to be at a 1.2. So then you just do like that, you hit next, and then download the file. This right here is pretty important as well. Uh, this thing needs the exact file name that it is. So you can't change the file name of this thing. Uh, if you change the file name of this, then the, the boot kernel or whatever you want to call it does not recognize the file and then it doesn't install it. So if you change the name of this, it will not work. Also pay attention because some places in the software will tell you to change it to something. So like if you see right here, it says router dot and then CONF file. But if you get the paper documentation, if I'm not mistaken, the paper documentation says something different. I would do with whatever the website says because it's probably gonna be the newest variant of whatever it's supposed to be. But it used to be like IO router.config or, or router IO. I, I don't recall exactly what it was, but it was something different. So then you basically just save this and you wanna save it. I would save it directly on your USB stick. As you can see, we've saved it before because it's asking, do you wanna replace it? Uh, and just say yes, it'll just do that. It takes like one second to download, and then you're done. So what you wanna do is you wanna plug this USB stick into the VPN, power on your VPN, make sure that you have your ethernet plugged in to your VPN on the front side of the VPN, so that way uh, it has internet access. You wanna ensure it has internet access. When it turns on, you'll have a red light at first. Uh, give it some time, it takes a, 
quite a long time to get this thing to start up for the first time. So you'll see that blue blinking light whenever the device is trying to configure itself or when it's trying to make a new, new device in this web interface here. Essentially, it will keep blinking blue after it goes solid blue, then you have now successfully connected. You should be able to come right here to your devices and you'll see the new device pop up here. Uh, it's really that simple. If you don't see it uh, connect, then there's a couple issues. You could have, like I said, no internet. Your configuration file could be corrupt. Just keep those things in mind that I mentioned in the beginning of the video because we did experience a little bit of that with, uh, you know, I think it was one, the corruption of files, two, the USB stick was actually bad as well. That should basically have you set up and ready to go. So let's go over here. I'm gonna jump back over to the portal real quick and just show you like, I think this is kind of important that, you know, you may understand what we just did there, but I'm gonna just go ahead and connect. This is how easy it is. I'm just connected to the internet like normal. Uh, devices are at the shop. Uh, it's gonna say connecting. It does take a minute. You wanna wait for it to say connected. And then now we can come in here and let's just go 192.168.252 maybe. Let's see what's there. All right, looks like we have a Mac valve on that on the network on that one there. Uh, let's see, maybe 251 has something. And so none of this is attached to the same network where we're at now. This is all remote devices that are just not here at the moment. So here we have a PLC processor, GuardLogix uh, PLC. So super powerful tool. Uh, we could open up Studio 5000 right now, get into Studio 5000, connect to this PLC, start programming. Uh, super awesome tool, uh, to be honest. Like this is kind of the only way to do things just because it's like, you don't need to be there. You can still have internet connectivity and it's kind of a pain having internet connectivity and, and be able to connect to devices. So definitely a great workaround for that. I mean, that's just one of the key reasons why we use it. Then also for our remote teams to be able to support, you know, support our customers and support new customers on service based uh, level. So hopefully uh, this uh, video was useful for you guys kind of rambled on quite a bit and talking about just the general concept of things, but very quick setup. It probably only takes like five minutes to set up, but I did want to show that to you guys because I did want to show that to you guys because it is uh, something that's very simple, very quick, but if you don't know where to find it, it is kind of complicated to get to. All right, I'm gonna show you one more little bonus thing. I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this link right here. Uh, we'll put this link in the comments below as well. But what this does is this gives you the ability to go in here and change the IP address of the router. But the reason why this, this is a little pro tip right here because you're gonna need to change this often. If you're setting up any new devices, uh, what you can do, and this is another thing that's super powerful, if you know the default IP address, address of something, you can just come here and change the IP address of your router uh, save your changes and then you'll be able to see that you're now on the network with that device. You won't see anything else that, that may be on the network, but you will see that one device that you're trying to set up. Uh, you go in there, you set it up to the IP address that you want, then you change this back. I mean, it's literally more simple than trying to change the IP address of your computer. The issue is it's kind of hard to find this. It's one of those things that's buried back. I mean, you can see I'm in some, some other location of this thing. Like, to be honest, I don't even try to search for it. I can't even find it. I found it one time and it took me like an hour to find it. Uh, well, actually I found it a couple times and it took me like an hour time, hour to find it every time almost. But user interfaces are not really my thing. So I guess it's in the fleet manager. Uh, device templates, devices, networks, LAN. So there you go, that's how you, that's how you navigate to it. I guess it's not that difficult, but if you don't know where it's at, it's hard to find. And, and uh, this is a super powerful tool right here, just being able to change your IP address to map, match whatever devices that you have on your network. All right, so here you have your Stride Links device, which if you've ordered this, you already know, then right here in the top side is where you put your USB stick. Now this light will go red whenever you do not have a connection. And one thing that you need to do is you need to take your Stride Links USB, plug it into there, then turn on the power. Uh, then you'll see this blue light start to blink whenever you are starting to make a connection with the internet. Uh, if you don't see that blue light blinking, then it's not connected to the internet. Uh, if you see this red light, this obviously means you have an error and you're not connecting to the internet. But the first thing I would check and verify is that you're connecting to the internet. Uh, one thing that we've experienced is you do have some issues with configuration sometimes so you may have to use a different usb stick or redo your configuration because for some reason something gets corrupted and it doesn't uh, take the new configuration 
and then therefore it won't allow it to try to reach out to the internet because it needs the configuration to try to reach out to the internet and tell it what account it's trying to link up to and whenever this thing uh, is trying to reach out to the internet it will blink blue and then after it's done uh, reaching out to the internet and it actually makes a connection to the account it will go solid blue like I said guys, hopefully this video was useful for you. Uh, put down in the comments below if you have any questions or comments. And if you know anything about these VPNs, let us know. If you have any pro tips, let us know. Thank you guys and I'll catch you on the next one.